Well, this is like a whole sort of, this is a lecture in and of itself, isn't it? So, you know, in terms of why patients don't respond to CAR T-cell therapy for ALL, one of the reasons is that they just don't have great T-cells. So a lot of our patients come through and they've had significant amount of exposure to chemotherapy and their T-cell health or their fitness of the T-cells can be impaired. So there will be a proportion of patients that either won't respond um, or patients that will relapse early because of a sort of a failed engraftment. The CAR T-cell product just isn't fit for purpose. Um, you know, and again, we're looking at that and lots of groups are looking at that to try to essentially um, characterize T-cell fitness so that we can identify patients who are at risk of a sort of a, 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 a less functional product so that we can use manufacturing um, wizardry, if you will, to sort of transform those T-cells into something more potent and something more functional. So that's an active piece of research and one of our um, sort of research groups at UCL is looking at that. The second sort of big group of patients that don't respond um, to, to CAR T-cell therapy or, or that relapse after CAR T-cell therapy, it's where they lose targets. So the leukemic cell loses CD19 in these single antigen targeting strategies. And it, you know, it's difficult to counter that. You know, obviously there's lots of different approaches to that. First of all, you know, can you target two antigens or three antigens to try to, to mitigate for that CD19 escape? And you know, to, there's been plenty of studies and we've conducted some ourselves um, looking at CD19 1922 um, co-expressing cars, um, bisostronic cars, we've looked at infusing cocktail car um, therapeutics to these patients and to date it's not absolutely crystal clear that dual targeting CAR T-cell therapy definitely improves outcomes and definitely prevents antigen negative escape in these patients. I think you know this is a, a, an evolving piece of research and I think we're learning as we go and we'll, I'm sure we'll get there but we're not quite there yet. So that would be a strategy to potentially overcome the sort of CD19 negative escape would be multi-antigen targeting. And then, of course, it's just other strategies to prevent rejection of CAR T cells because that's the other problem we face. The CAR is a, it's, it's a foreign protein, if you will. It's usually derived from a mouse antibody or a rat antibody, and it's been sort of formulated into a construct and put into a patient T cell. So the immune system of the patient sees this sort of foreign um, piece of protein that's sort of derived from a mouse or a rat, perceives it as a kind of immunological threat and tries to reject it. So, and that's something that we do see in a proportion of patients. You usually see that within the first sort of three to six months. You've got beautiful CAR T engraftment and suddenly it falls away to totally zero. And that usually represents immunological rejection. So what do you do about that? Well, lots of things you can do from an engineering point of view. You can try to humanize the construct and lots of places have done that. And we've done that for a few of our constructs that we've been using so that, the, you know, again, it's less detectable to the human immune system. Um, so, I, so I think you know that's another big area of research. You know, if you think about how far we've come in the last 10 years, it's absolutely extraordinary. All the different things that we've been able to test and all these clinical studies. And I'm very hopeful, you know, given what you know the advances we've made, that we will get there and that we will get to the point of having a product that will adequately treat leukemia safely with minimal toxicity, um, and that the responses will be durable for all patients and not just for a proportion. You know, but but I think we're not quite there yet.